Okay, so <clears throat> I'm picking up this tutorial after our first full big day in class. And right towards the end, uh, we created some lights and modified some render settings and some things like that. Um, I went home and tweaked my scene a little bit. I um, actually find it enjoyable kind of organizing space and playing with light. Uh, it's almost uh, relaxing for me. Uh, so I continued that, and I'm going to um, maybe talk about some of the things I did in the scene later. But what I want to do is at least just show the, the render that I came up with um, to kind of re-emphasize the point of you know what we're trying to do with this assignment. Um, I exchanged a couple emails with the student um, uh, after class the other day. And remember, this is more about design, not necessarily creating an illustration, I think is the way I, I framed that, right? So don't worry about using the primitives to get overly like, you know, to build a character or something like that. We're just using these as elements. I mean, if I wanted to, I, I guess I could see this light as maybe this little uh, five-sided column, you know, over here, cylinder. Um, is a character, right? It's the door is open and it's walked into the scene, and um, it's the little loner uh, um, cylinder coming into this party with all the the big wigs, right? All the the uh, the pyramids and the cubes are hanging out. I don't know, but um, um, but that's not really the intent here. When I was designing this, it's all about the the space, right? I'm thinking about design, and still there's some things I would tweak about this. Um, I like this relationship of sizes here. I don't like this one and this one being as close to each other as they are. I think this actually should be a maybe a little smaller. Um, maybe this one back here should be a little taller um, in relationship to what's going on here in the front. <coughs> um, that's its own thing. Uh, other thing I'll mention too, just from a render standpoint, this seems blurry on the, uh, on the screen capture, is I've actually turned on depth of field. Um, so this is why we have this softness and we have kind of a focus here on this um, uh, boxy uh, cylinder that's here in the front. Um, uh, and there's something about the cylinder too I'll, I'll mention later on. So what I want to do though for this tutorial is um, kind of backtrack and start where we were where we're adding a light. And I want to talk a little bit about the lights and the render settings um, just for reference for you all since we just, uh, just introduced this in class. So. Um, I wanted to show this, and I'll leave it up here. Um, it's, well, it's in the picture viewer, I can refer to it. But what I'm gonna do is um, hide all the lights in my scene um, and start over. Maybe even the camera, maybe I'll, I'll do something um, different with those. So uh, let's go ahead and close that out. Um, one thing in cinema um, is that, uh, you know, we have, I'm not gonna worry about these for right now, We've already talked about clicking on this little uh, icon. If we toggle back and forth, we'll jump us out of the written the this camera, right? So, um, it the three D view will go from the default camera to whatever camera I've created, right? I'll toggle back and forth between there. But there's also these little dots. <coughs> these dots are very helpful. Uh, these little dots. Uh, the let's go with the torture objects here. This one we click on them. So this is the sphere. Um, you can see, actually, I have one right here. Um, in fact, I'll unhide that. So I don't know if you saw that pop up. There was a little cylinder that I wasn't sure if I wanted to get rid of it. Oops, where is it, this one? Yeah, it was that one. So I'll just delete that. Um, you know, maybe I create an object, and I'm like, well, for now, I maybe want to turn that off. I don't want to see it in the, in the viewport. So this is this one. If I double click, you can see it disappears, right? I have a, a nothing, which is basically the default, which should be on. We have green light that means um, keep it uh, on in the viewport, right? The top one is the viewport. The bottom, oh, and then, and that means off. Don't show it to me. If I uh, went up and just said render, I'll give it a second to make its way over to that little that space. Sorry, I should have turned on my progressive uh, viewport, but I'm leaving it at the default settings. So here is my uh, that object. So it disappeared in the viewport, but it's showing up in the render. Let's just stop that. So that's what the bottom one is, right? So I can tell an object to also not show up. Right? 
So voila, it disappeared. It's not in the scene anymore. So um, I can hide the viewport visibility and I can hide the, uh, the render visibility of an object, right? Um, you might be asking, so what's the deal with the green one if uh, the object shows up if it's just gray? And so the issue there would be if I hide a parent, so nothing's in the scene, um, but then I turn on the green light, you can see that object does show up in the render. So there's just a way, it's kind of like what we talked about before, you can have a material here and that applies to all the children in this hierarchy. But if I put a new material on top of um, an object, as cinema is going through its instructions, it will say, oh, since you specifically told me to use a different material, or since you specifically told me that I should be visible in the render, I'm gonna ignore what your parent said. This is perfect as a college student, right? <laughs> like, here I'm going to ignore what my parents have to told me. <laughs> and the parent here is the object group, right? And then uh, the child object is making its own decision about whether or not to show up in the render. I digress. Anyways, um, so I just want to, because I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do here is just hide all my lights. I put them into a group, right? Like I did with the other. So here's all my lights. I have some targets. Um, and all these. So I've hid those so I have no lights in the scene, right? And uh, let's just turn off the interactive render region. Um, I'm also going to do a little screen modification here. All right, so <clears throat> this is what we did in class. This uh, is kind of like setting up a little interface to help with kind of speedy renders and our workflow. So the first thing is because we're going to start taking pictures and setting lights, is I'm going to go over to window. And down towards the bottom is a new view panel. Um, I can't remember if this is the case. Maybe I should do it this way. If I say uh, new view panel, no, it, it's, it always gives me the perspective. That's good. Okay. All right, so um, I've got my render view up here. Uh, I'm going to make sure this is just the default camera because this is going to be my workspace, right? It's bigger. It's easy to navigate. But what I want is a little window. It's kind of like on the back of your camera, right? So this is my world, I'm gonna move objects around, but I also wanna see what it looks like through the camera. Uh, and I don't want this to float over the top of, of my scene. You can see that it says render camera here, right? So I'm just gonna take this uh, little, these little three lines, that little thumb, and you can drag it wherever you want to, but this is a pretty good spot for it, right? So I'm just gonna load it and size it in there. So this is what I'm gonna see when I start adding lights. Um, and I'm going to use the interactive viewer when I get to that point. <clears throat> All right, so this is set. Work area, looking through the camera area, right? Taking pictures. Uh, the other thing, let's go into the render setting. So this here is um, just render the view. This one is render to picture viewer along with a whole bunch of other things, right? And the picture viewer is like taking a final picture and saving it out, um, like if you were rendering an animation. And then this one that has a gear on it is the... Uh, is the settings. <clears throat> we'll come to this one in a sec. But um, your default, as we talked about in class, would be the standard render. Um, we're going to use the physical render. I could explain all this stuff. <laughs> Hopefully, we get the GP, uh, eGPU soon, and we will just end up using Redshift uh, for this stuff. Um, but if we go to the options, the first thing is because we're not going to actually use any lights, and this normally is turned on, default light we're just gonna turn that off because um, the default light is a big giant distant light, like a sun, but it doesn't cast a shadow. It's, you know, it's not gonna look um, uh, very pleasing as far as render quality. Um, but this is just to help us like if we're doing quick little examples. So this is the, you know, what you would see kind of with the distant light. Um, but we're just gonna turn that off in our uh, viewport for now because we're gonna um, create lights in a different way. Okay. Um, uh, so the next thing is, you know, I already created a camera. In fact, just to demonstrate that, I'm going to leave that where it is. But let's say I did want to do, um, let's see. So let's just say this was the view that I wanted. Um, 
I'm going to use my own camera if I already created. I like the view there. But if I did want another one, or you just sort of remember how to do this, I'm looking in the default camera, and I'm going to go up to the cameras and just choose camera. There are different types of rigs. Maybe we'll talk about those later. I'm just going to choose camera, and I'll leave it as that name. Um, and if I want to, let's, I'll just go ahead and, and move around again. And you can see, if I zoom out far enough, right there is my other camera that I created. And I can come over here and say, you know what, let's look through camera. Right, so that's that viewport over there. We can do a little toggle right between that, between this, over to the other one. So we have all these different uh, camera setups. So, and again, if you um, once you get a camera set up, remember you can right click and go to uh, rigging tags and put the protection. And I wholeheartedly recommend this. So you don't. This happens to everybody. Uh, intro students, advanced users. You you think you're in your default camera and you're moving things around. Then you realize, oh, I was in my render camera and I spent all that time putting it at the perfect place and now I messed it up. Right. So that protection tag uh, is a good thing to put in there. And again, you can get to all the tags if you don't have a right click available to you over here. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, let's go back and let's make this, oops, let's make this the render camera and let's make this the default camera. <laughs> all right, so what I'm gonna do is create my first light in the scene and um, if you if you look at other tutorials, keep in mind there's lots of different ways to do this. I'm using kind of a different approach. It's a slow approach, but a predictable approach, um, and not as many uh, buttons and things for you to deal with. So I'm going to come up and create a sphere, and I will just move the sphere, and I'm going to make it about yay big, right? And I'm going to try to do it something different than maybe what I did before. And I don't have my three button mouse in front of me, so I'm using the uh, my stupid magic mouse. So navigation is painful. Um, yeah, let's just put it there. So I put it behind the scene. So with the sphere, let's, in fact, uh, I'm gonna create a new one. So let's create <coughs> material, new uh, PBR, photo-based reflectance, let's put buttons here. For the PBR material, we're going to turn off its default reflectance. We're going to go to luminance and turn that on. And we're going to make the brightness, again, I think the default I started with was 1,000, which is not bad. I'm going to say 2,000. I know this one because I'm going to put it behind the objects. I'm assuming I'm going to want to make this brighter. So we can change that, obviously, as we go along. And we can do that interactively right? once we get over here. Um, the other very, very, very important part is um, so this is going to be the like a 2,000 watt light bulb is the way maybe to think about this. Um, we could also leave, actually you could do this two ways. You can also just change the value, I think is the other way that this works. Oh no, actually in cinema you can't do it that way. I'm thinking of Maya. So, um, so yeah, so brightness here. And then the very important part, let us focus on illustration, or sorry, illumination and um, this little tag here, polygon light. In fact, I'm going to leave that off for a second <laughs> so you can see um, why you always want to make sure you turn this on if you're when you're using geometry as lights uh, in the Cinema 4D world. It's different in Redshift. So I'll just leave that there. And I'm going to take this and apply it um, over here. Right. So I'm just going to drag, um, click, drag, drop. And now you can see I have a material on top of it. Uh, and then we also need to just tweak the render settings so this works for us. We're going to go to um, physical, and the default here is adaptive and low. We're going to change this for now to progressive. And this just means that it's um, going to just keep iterating. We'll start, you know, low quality, get better, get better. And it's going to continue to do samples is what it's going to do. Um, we'll talk about some of these settings in a second. Okay. So I've got a light in here, I've got the setup, and then what I'm going to do is click so that Cinema knows this is my active view, and I'm going to click and hold and go to Interactive Render Region, and it's going to drop in um, this 
a little box, right? I'm just, you can just size it Oops. to fit um, your scene if you want to see how all the lights, you know, how it's working across there. But you can see this looks pretty crappy. You can see it's getting a little bit better. We can start to see some of the shapes in here. Um, uh, but um, this looks horrible, right? <laughs> it's not a very good quality at all. So let's go back to the that material. And again, that little polygon light, let's turn that on. So now cinema understands how to treat that object, that illumination is coming from it, and it has to do how it, the ray tracing works. Is it, are the pixels tracing back to the light, or is the light sending information out into the scene? Um, that's a very <laughs> probably inaccurate uh, characterization, but it's um, just to help you think of it that way. So you can see I already have um, a decent light in here. It's, it's too bright, right? So let's, oops, where's my other luminance? And so let's just turn that down. 1500. All right, so I've already got a start. That's not bad at all. Um, so let's leave that one there. Um, the interactive render is going to just keep going the whole time. It's great to have on, right, as you're doing things, but um, it will tax your machine. So make sure to come back and turn it off um, until you're ready to use it, you know, if, if you can hear your machine cycling. So, all right, so one thing I didn't do in class maybe was a light. Instead of using a sphere, let's use a plane. Right, so I just created, um, oops, <laughs> right, so just a ground plane. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I want this to be like a, a light box, right, facing uh, the scene, oops. So, um, let's see, I'm trying to, so, I mentioned the other day that uh, you know you can certainly rotate this, put this into place. In fact, I'm gonna I will go ahead and do it that way. Let's just let me just rotate around. Um, let me move this up and over. Open ends. There we go. And you know what? I'm gonna create another uh, material. Again, turn that off. Um, you know, the other thing we could do, in fact, instead of create a new one, I can click on this PBR if I hold down Command. Or if I do copy and paste, I can get a new material, right? So this is just like the previous one. Um, the reason I'm doing a separate one is because I got a feeling this one I don't need as bright. Um, the size of the object matters for the brightness. So this is pretty large. I want this to be like a big soft light. This is already probably going to be too bright. But I'll put this on the plane here, and click and interactive region, right? So you can see that's way too bright. Let's go ahead and turn that down. Let's try uh, 300. Yeah, just nice and soft. It's not bad. I would probably tweak it even further. I just want something just, just to fill in a little bit of light so it's not overly dark in the, in the scene. So um, the one thing to keep in mind here is the direction, like how this light is facing. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I do this, um, not going to work very well for us, right? It's well, I mean, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to aim it, all right. Um, an important thing, though, to note about this is um, let's do what I did in class. So I created a, a locator. Sorry. I created a null, and I'm treating it as what some programs would call as a, as a locator. So it's just this group, right? It's empty. But if I click on the object properties for it, I can tell it how to show itself in the editor. This won't render. You won't see it in render. But I'm going to say a circle. And let's make it uh, 30 centimeters. So I'm just going to position this. Well, that's, I think where it is is fine. And what I'm going to do is use this as a target. All right. 
So what I want is for this plane to always look at it so that I don't have to um, orient and rotate that thing. It's, you know, it's a little um, cumbersome, I guess, to you know, take this, oh, I need to be not in the world set up and I want to rotate it this way and you know, I want it to be over here. An easier way is just if I could tell it where to look and then I would just drag it around if it had a target. So let's go over to the plane and well, I'll do it from here. Tags, animation, target. Right? Tag, animation, target. So this, now we're telling the plane, hey, you need to look, let's turn this there. You need to look at something, right? So if I click on the tag, it says down here, what is the target object? Do not worry about the up vector for now. Um, and so I'm gonna take this target and point it in there. And you can see that my object just got a little squirrely, right? It seems to be, in fact, as I, if I, um, you can see it seems to be orienting kind of <laughs> towards it. Um, you can see what's happening is the Z is pointing towards that object. You can see the Z here is pointing towards it. If I, oops, if I move this around, you can see that Z handle is pointing there. So the issue is that the target by default in most, uh, aim constraints, is what this is, um, use the Z to point at something, and then they try to use the Y as the up vector. And that just means like, this is, if a plane is flying, <laughs> it's pointing to in the direction it's going, and the Y direction would be straight up, unless you're a daredevil pirate, uh, pilot, right? And then you'd be doing loop the loop so. So what we need to do here is uh, any of the prefabs in, in cinema come in with a certain orientation, right? Um, as a default, and the plane, comes as a plane, right, like a floor. But here we want to use it differently. So what I'm going to do is change its orientation to be on the positive Z. Right? And then it should um, face the object. Like, right, you can see it's moving around, right, in that kind of direction. All right, so I'm going to take the, does the plane have some, yeah, it probably has rotation. I'm going to zero out all of its rotation. There we go. So I can spin the Z, it's not being affected um, by that, that up vector, right? But right now it's perfect. So just setting it up to be the, um, the Z orientation, if I move the target, you can see the object is moving. And I can do the same thing here, right? I can kind of position that so it's always looking at this. Oops, target. Okay. So we could do the same thing with a light cone <clears throat> like I did in class where, in fact, I'm not going to show this in the tutorial. I'll let you um, um, work with that. So if I created a cylinder, oops, a tube, and I made it the same, the tube has a, an inner radius and outer radius. So if I made the inner radius exactly the size of my light bulb, right, that I created here, um, and I orient it, <coughs> excuse me, if I orient it correctly, I can use and parent it to the light um, and zero out all of its uh, coordinates, um, I can basically create a, um, a spotlight like canister, right, that I can use to narrow the light and, and focus it a little bit. So I did this in class. I don't think I'll show this that part in the tutorial. I want to see if you can do that on your own. So create a tube parent it to the sphere, zero out its coordinates, and make sure it's oriented the right way and, and give the light a target so that it's pointing um, where you want it to so you have a true spotlight. All right, almost 25 minutes. So much stuff to cover. Uh, oh, last thing. Um, so we've been dealing with the interactive render over here. Oops, wrong with this one. Um, once you get it to the point where you're like, well, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't look pretty good right now. It needs some work. But after you get done with progressive, um, the never use the fixed samples, use adaptive. And we'll turn this to automatic. So Cinema 4D, based on things that we change in that, we'll figure out the sampling subdivisions that have to do with anti-aliasing and all that other stuff. Um, and again, the whole point here is to eliminate as many settings for you to have to deal with and understand. So these are being done for you. We'll talk about this one in a second. 
Um, these, the shadow ambient occlusion and subsurface scattering, we are not using those. So those are just big zeros. We don't need those. The only things we need to deal with to make the image quality better is the um, shading error threshold and the blurriness. So let's come over here and I'll turn on the adaptive. And just so we could make it quicker, I'm gonna narrow this just a little bit. It just looked like that. So if I want it to be um, 20 is the default, the lowest I would go for our class is 5%. You can see that the grain just got uh, much, much better, right? So I would say if you want a decent quality but still pretty good speed, I would use five um, just as the sh uh, shading threshold. And if you need it better, what we need to do is up this amount. And I would do it one at a time. Hopefully you can see that in the, it's hard to see probably in the, in the screen capture. But this has gotten better. I can turn this up. I wouldn't go anything higher than five probably, especially on our machines in the lab. Um, so this is just subdividing how many samples an area is getting is the best way to do that. And the shading error threshold is like a speed limit. It's a pixel saying, hey, how much noise is around me and how much error am I willing to deal with? So if there's 20% variability within the noise in the image, that's where it was before, um, uh, that just triggers whether or not it should do more samples. It's like I'm willing to do up to 20%, and so it just that's what it's going to render to. Here we've lowered that to 5%. You can see this already looks cleaner. Hopefully, if I in fact let's just shift this. Let's keep that little bit in mind, and I'll put that back to 20. And you'll see I reintroduced grain, and then I'll put this back to two. And you can see it got significantly more grainy, but it also got faster, right? So when you're trying to figure things out, just use progressive. When you're trying to get maybe more of a quality render, use adaptive and automatic, A, A. And then for shading threshold, lower is better, but slower. So something between five and 20%. And then there, uh, maybe it's nice that the numbers correlate. I hadn't thought about this. The blurriness subdivision for us, most times um, two is gonna be low quality, but if we need something really nice, we'll go up to five samples. Um, and again, we can see that's already, they're kind of working in tandem with each other. We can really put up there. Right, and you can use other numbers. You can use 10% or something, but don't put like 0.01% here and it will never finish. And don't put like 50 in, the, in here in these numbers. All right, now I'm done. <laughs>